Geopolitics and Empire is joined by Miriam Hinein, who is an investigative journalist, public health expert, filmmaker, eco-entrepreneur, who has directed the film Vanishing of the Bees. She's also the founder of the health and wellness magazine and marketplace, Honey Colony. Uh, thanks for coming on the podcast, Miriam. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So today we'll be talking about COVID-19, or as I like to call it, COVID-1984, the coronavirus, yes. uh, what's happening with all of this, uh, the hype, or as she calls it, the fear porn. Um, Miriam, you've been doing a lot of research on what's been happening. I recently did an interview with uh, journalist Spiro Skuras, where we liken what's happening to uh, a, yes. global yeah, a global 9-11, and that the coron coronavirus seems to be kind of a smokescreen for other things that are happening behind the scenes. Uh, I did the interview with Francis Boyle on the bioweapon angle back in January, but I think kind of at this point it's, it's, it's a moot point, uh, and we're moving on to look at other issues. Uh, and so I want to first start out by questioning how dangerous the virus uh, really is, um, and if the panic is warranted. And so I'd like to just mention a few articles that I've been reading. There's a Stanford expert who uh, recently wrote, quote, the case fatality ratio estimates in the U.S. population vary from 0.05% to 1%. And he says the government reaction is like an elephant being attacked by a house cat, frustrated and trying to avoid the cat. The elephant accidentally jumps off a cliff and dies. Uh, there are other also credible experts, uh, reports and scientists. And, you know, when we have this discussion online with people, it often comes down to like my fact versus your fact, my scientist versus your uh, a scientist. And so there's sources that say there's a high fatality rate, a low fat fatality rate. There's a new study on Wuhan that says the previous rates were inflated and that the rate they're yeah. seeing in Wuhan is 1.4%. And then we have Wolfgang uh, Wodarg, who was the health of the counts, uh, was the head of the health for the Council of Europe. He revealed how the pharmaceutical industry pushed the WHO, who is largely funded by the pharmaceutical industry, how uh, the ph big pharma pushed them to declare a pandemic for the 209 swine flu, which technically, he says, was not a pandemic. There's, it's, there's so much, right? There's so much. So I just want to go back because when you did your interview with, with Francis, um, I was in San Francisco. And so it was January. It was effing cold. And this was just beginning. And... Zach Voorhees, the Google whistleblower, and I had done prior to that in L.A., um, Man on the Street. And I called it, well, I just said, is this the virus that didn't cry wolf? So, and I, I guess Zach didn't really get what I was saying then. And then he, he got it. And we went through this period of fear porn way before what the mainstream. So we've been kind of in the future and uh, watching this unravel to crazy proportions and I've also been saying that this is the 9-11 this is 9-11 to the 9-11 and I did watch your report yesterday both of you which was excellent um, so as far as the fatality rate I am looking at it as a functional medicine consultant and coach through that lens and just to take a moment to look at what is functional medicine it's looking at you as an individual so the fatality rates we know we can all agree are fudged or off or inflated or deflated. Someone in, in an expat in the Philippines leaked, uh, showed me where they were. He caught a glitch where they were messing with the numbers. And in, in the beginning, I mean, I thought all this I was looking at all this footage from supposed China, which is now maybe manufactured in Taiwan and is part of a, a campaign. Who the hell knows? But I was seeing inconsistencies, but it was terrifying. So we've seen, and I know I'm jumping around. I will answer your question. Like, did, did you see the footage of, you know, the, the people spitting on elevator buttons or trying to get help and then spitting at the nurse or the person, the administrative person. And then we saw here the NBA player or in America, because I'm in Costa Rica, touching all the mics and just seeing these, these similar unravelments all over the place. So as far as the deaths go, the PC, the test fundamentally is wrong. So fundamentally you are, 
there's presumptive positives. What are these terms? What is presumptive positive, a.k.a. an assumption? And then we see a study coming out of Italy where 99% of the people have um, chronic other illnesses, comorbidities. And so there's other things at play, and it's an older generation. So the fatality rate, I think that it is hyped up. Because if now they want everyone to get tested and initially think the who didn't want anyone else to use a a test, the CDC started using their own test and there was problems with it. It was contaminated. And now it's, I checked two days ago on the CDC page and there were six companies, uh, Abbott, Roche, and, and now there's 11. So what is the standardization You have to look at each test and see the inserts, which I still have yet to do. And uh, Sayer Jai of Green Med Info, who is um, a scientist, explains that fundamentally if you run the test enough times, it's going to pick up coronavirus. So we're also seeing that there's two supposed strains, L strain, S strain. One is weaker. People are saying that they feel like they have already been infected with uh, coronavirus. So it's going to be a mess. And I think what the agenda is behind it is to really classify us, uh, bust out these digital certificates and insert us with vaccines. And and this is what something I've been studying. I've been studying big pharma since the making of Vanishing of the Bees, and I saw it was covering what was happening in Samoa. I don't know if you're familiar with, you know, a mass vax job in a effing month of 200,000 people where they're coming to your door. So now we're seeing military all over the world. Um, well, I mean, what do you make that- of, like in Denmark, they just declared, uh, passed this emergency law that will, uh, says the government can force vaccinate every citizen which for me is like a violation of the nuremberg code absolutely uh, code. Uh, absolutely and there's been a whole group of us and that's why they've smeared us as anti-vaxxers and i'm pro medical freedom i'm pro vaccine safety i'm not against the theory of vaccines but given what we've seen now and who's behind this pandemic with Bill Gates and the CDC and the WHO, um, it's it's amazing to me that from a political stance that they everything is Trump's fault, and the CDC is 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 like whining about losing money. And then when you look, you do the dig into the rabbit hole, and you find out that the CDC is embedded with Hollywood, and that they pay their employees to watch soap operas. And we have now are all participants in a live version of contagion. So if you take a, if, and this was like a March 7th, I posted this in, on Twitter, saw contagion and looked up whether, of course, they, Hollywood conferred with the CDC, consulted with them. They had. I assume that they consulted with the WHO. There's a slight little bit of rivalry in the movie. And then, arguably, then the CDC and the WHO take this script and apply it the best they can to our matrix. And regarding the the vaccines, it's like you think uh, one of the reasons is, I mean, just to make money because uh, they, I mean, they make huge amounts of money. I know ten years ago with the swine flu, governments bought tens of millions of vaccines and almost none of them were used and so all that money was wasted but the pharmaceuticals made so much money or is there something further beyond just the the profit motive i i think definitely the profit motive uh there's this organization the undp they they don't even allow you to to audit and the massive amount of money the the role that bill gates plays In this, that's one aspect. I think personally that, uh, yeah, the crap, listen, usually it takes seven to eight years to make a vaccine. And then even then, it's very arguably not safe. Now it's all about this make medicine, this make vaccine, this like um, being so proud. Like there's, 
you know, I've been watching the congressional hearings because that's really where the truth happens, like that, that you can catch things. Um, and Mr. Green applauding Fauci and, and at the speed in which, and what is happening is experimental medicine before our eyes in a, such a more opened way. Um, there's, there's, so I think, let's say the malaria medication, for instance, it's used to dampen the panic. It's experimental. These tests are all issued under emergency authorization use. Um, they have Dr. Burks there to make it seem like it's FDA approved because it's FDA approved. Not that that even matters because it's the medical mafia. Um, but now it's so brazen. Um, and the truth is that these have not gone through the proper measures. And that includes fundamentally the tests that are telling you. And the amount of fear has um, enabled people to be running to go get tested and to create a craze that has even reached the mountains of the jungle. That's and amazing. And speaking of jungle, I mean... You just bugged out. You left the U.S. recently and went down to <laughs> Latin America. And so, you know, we're talking about, you know, the, the pharmaceutical agenda. And, I mean, there's effectively, they call it soft martial law that's being declared. I mean, effectively, it's... China it's, light. Yeah. And I, we've never seen this is unprecedented. I mean, in our lifetimes, we've never seen anything like this. This is like World War II, uh, basically, a century ago. Uh, you know, can you speak why? What made you bug out i mean be, be, be. i i want to say that i didn't it wasn't bugging out it okay when i started making vanishing of the bees which was in 2007 uh, around 2008 i just started you know i'm just going to share what phrases would come to me because now in 2020 in the age of aquarius I'm going to own that I have some psychic skills and I see things, I see patterns. Um, and so I've been getting the call to leave for years and I would say till around 2011. I, I didn't know if it was, gonna, I thought it was going to be a hurricane. And then as of late in the past two years, definitely mandatory vaccines and, and I, a fear. So I'm not afraid of the virus. I am afraid of what they're going to use the virus. They're going to justify things. Uh, like I was listening to the hearings before the power went off, and, and I'll get back to going to Costa Rica. Um, and, and they talk about Article 42 that they're in to enact, because I've been writing notes, Title 42 of the U.S. Code, but I haven't had a chance to look that up. Um, today I was looking up the fact that they started looking for quarantine managers in November around the same time as Event 201, um, offering them $90,000. Of course, they would have to get immune, their immunizations, their vaccines. Um, so I was feeling the call. And in reality, it's like the universe. It's like Hotel California. You can check out anytime you like, but you can just never leave. And the universe made it so that I was here in Costa Rica about last um, December. And I went there to start healing because I was not sleeping very well at all. And I had started feeling the wrath of techno-fascism by selling CBD and started getting censored. And so... Uh, for instance, banned for life off PayPal, banned from GoFundMe, banned from Kiva, shut down by all these merchant processors. So I initially thought I was dealing with stress, um, having studied functional medicine. And anyways, long story short, I figured out it was mold. Went back to LA uh, thinking I was going to stay there a few months and come back here in preparation and hearing this calling of just leave. And... Uh, I feel like I just got here at the 11th hour. I lost my apartment because of the mold. I um, got sick, met Zach, went to San Francisco. It was very cold. And I was just like feeling like the gates closing. And we were actually going to leave during the Envision Festival. And that, that was when we went through like the two weeks of fear point. We were actually, I bought hazmat suits. This is like 
before most people now i think people are in this phase we had hazmat i already had a mask because i already know about the pollution in this world and i have chemical sensitivities and there was like one friend for instance that wanted to come over and pee and suck wouldn't let her come over to pee and we were like using alcohol and washing our hands and it was like a very bad state of mind to reside in you know and then i was like then just came here. And and Zach was actually going to leave two days ago. And I'm like, I don't understand. We actually got out of this. Um, and you want to go back when it's like getting worse every single day. Um, so I think he's come to his senses. And, and, and it's to say it's everywhere. Um, because here I, I got shamed. I wanted to buy get a motorcycle or rent a motorcycle because... All the stores have closed down. They've closed down casinos. They've not that I go to casinos. They've shut down parks. Um, so to say that this is permeating, this is a globalist agenda. You know, I, I suppose one of the reasons uh, leaving is, I mean, just kick, to get your comment on the economic and perhaps yeah. political effects. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's uh, some of the people that I'm listening to, there's there's someone I admire, he's, he's Croatian, um, and he gave an interview recently, and I'll just give a quick translation of what he said. He's a geopolitical expert, uh, he's an admiral, his name is Davor uh, Domazet Losho, and he basically was saying, I mean, a lot of the things he's been saying for years are coming true, and he, he mentioned force, force vaccinations like, like you did, um, and we've seen that happen in Denmark and Samoa, and, and so that's increasing trend. Maldives. Um, uh, and he says... He said in the interview, don't people understand that countries like Italy are becoming concentration camps? And then he asks, you know, why are they doing this? He says this is kind of like a trial balloon and that things can or will go much further perhaps in the future. Uh, and that they're creating a panic to destroy um, laws and political freedoms and to destroy small businesses so that only large, large corporations uh, will remain. Yeah, and then this transition to like digital fintech uh, payments system, you know, they're saying don't use cash and that sort of thing. So on the economic front, I mean, what, what, what do you think? Are the just to go back to when you said fatalities, let, let's just keep some things in mind that I want to bring up that uh, one, there's a lot of shortages, right? Because we, we rely on pharmaceuticals. So I went on on the page on the FDA and saw all the medical shortages. So people could be dying because of because of that they're not getting their meds like morphine everything um secondly if you go in and you get an you get a malaria medication or antiviral or an experimental and then you die you're going to be classified as a covid19 death are you really a covid19 death no not if you have also let's say an autoimmune condition or something else that's going to impact the economy this is maybe a mini calling of the older generation and that's why like someone like Dr. Burks is calling on to the millennials because we're also um, the ministry of truth is telling the youth like it's okay to go behind your parents back and uh, vaccinate. I don't know if you saw that wiki how pamphlet on basically how do you lie to your parents. So there's also like in regards to economic reset is this like Zach introduced me to Nasara which is, you know, and believing in this white hats and, and the patriots are going to help us and that uh, Trump is kind of giving in uh, to Big Pharma that clearly runs the show. But I'm not, I'm not so optimistic in that, in that way because they have so much pull. So this is definitely, I think, to re to reset the economy. Um, there's no sh thing people are buying stuff. It's it's also when he he's talking when when President Trump is talking about speaking with Bezos. How long is it going to be before before the drones are let loose? Um, so they're going to control s certain e economy, but it, is this really a plan where the elitists? from Russia and China and the U S are in cahoots. Like what, what do you think as someone who's studied geopolitics? I mean, it's tough to say, but it seems like, uh, I've, I've talked, spoken to other guests about this Chinification uh, idea, like where 
you, the Chinese dystopian um, yes. authoritarian system, you know, first started with the with the internet. Uh, so you're, you're experiencing now in Europe, uh, in the West, this Chinification of the internet, and then we've seen we're seeing now. We saw that those clips of the drones uh, patrolling the streets and shouting at yes, people. Yes, yes, I posted now, that. that. That's happening now in Spain uh, and in Italy, and so you see now all these different points. You know, internet drones. Uh, and financially, you know, I've, I've mentioned previously that I had a financial account frozen. Um, and then the owner of the institution said, um, again, that now they're applying those same, well, what they're doing in China, the, um, the social credit score system is now being used in the West. So uh, just all across the board is the Chinification. Uh, yes. Of yeah. The West. China light, as I said, but I like Chinification. Uh, better. I want to let's just touch upon these. Um, a few weeks ago, I said, "Watch, they're going to start weaponizing this uh, fever gun, you know, coming to a forehead near you." So, from again, from a functional medicine point of view, or just if you're taking a red eye, you might have a low grade fever. It doesn't mean you have coronavirus. Like they've made it worse than HIV, and it's ironic that Dr. Burks who is very embedded in the history of HIV, said, what if you, if you um, misdiagnose someone as HI, with HIV and it was wrong? Well, they're doing the same damn thing. So what if you have like a low-grade fever and now you're going to take something to try to suppress it and then you're going to be called a liar or you're traveling and, and you get caught and then you, you're put with... Um, with people who are sick because you're supposedly asymptomatic for more than 14 days. Also, I made a call to try to see if there's any patients and finally got to someone in the ER at a hospital called St. Joseph's in Burbank. But when you call and I posted the message, first of all, everything is automated. Really, they're telling you very few people should go to the hospital. So the very place where people are should go when they're sick they're saying if you have a 104 fever where are they going to take them are they going to take them to that motel that they turn to the quarantine camp to the mercy and the comfort bobbing ships uh why are all these tanks marching in all over the place and why is it a crime to have a fever so th these are this this is this is scary don't you think yeah, I mean, like I said, we we haven't seen this since you know World War Two, 1930s uh, and 40s. Can, is, are there any uh, final um, thoughts or, or points that you want to make or to summarize? Or that uh, it's important not to succumb to fear, to realize the impact of fear on the immune system. That a lot of these things, if you know you're in your 40s and you're just now finding out that you need to count. To a certain to twenty and wa use soap to wash your hands. Okay, so in other words, let's look, look at the silver linings, and let's communicate with one another. Like you, um, you've been taken down and censored, and we're just trying to make sense of things. It's important to to communicate and to trust in the community, the the hive wisdom. So just to keep your immune system with things like vitamin C, with things like selenium, with nascent iodine, uh, NAC to keep your liver. These are all things, and silver. These are all things that you should be doing because we're living in a toxic soup. The, the big pharma has paved the way to a perfect storm or a perfect cytokine storm. Um, and, and that, um, for instance, I'll just add also like, they started here, there's a law where they, in Costa Rica, in the jungle, where they have to clean the knobs uh, a couple times a day. And we're still like in a community kitchen and we're cooking, but they're coming in there spraying disinfectants. People don't realize that vaporized bleach is an irritant that can exacerbate a pulmonary issue. And we've seen footage of spraying shit all over, sorry if we can't swear, of spraying crap all over the place and not thinking, you know, even if you don't have COVID-19, whatever this thing is, 
uh, that it's an irritant. We've just created this perfect storm and it, it just, we need to stick together. I don't know if we could take a test, if we can just go to the globalists and go like, you know, can I study or just be, be like, I don't know. Did you see Chet uh, Hanks's um, tweet? Yeah. Post on Instagram. Yes. It's a little bit disturbing to say you'll be the first to be taken to a FEMA camp. I didn't see that. Yeah, he he's kind of like saying so. Basically, they say that I'm Illuminati and and uh, kind of riffs on it and um, says that he's hungry and gonna go and eat some blood, uh, some adrenal gland. It's, it was very. We're living in very bizarre times. Uh, are you are you taking note of like what's happening with the celebrities catching and, and the posts by Madonna and the posts by Tom Hanks. And they're just very strange. Yeah. I mean, I don't really follow all that celebrity Hollywood. It's stuff, not celebrity I, though. It's more no, like right, the I, cabal or the, the, the supposed Satanists uh, who are behind all of this. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 as you mentioned, I started to, yeah come across my my desk these 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 things and so yeah it's it's really odd yeah it, i just say that in his tweet tom hanks says um he's saying that they're stuck inside and that rita has won six straight hands and that she's beating him by 201 points and that the typewriter in the photo is um corona um corona sp- Corona Smith, they used to sell firearms. And anyways, so that's a little bit bizarre to be supposedly in, in under quarantine with a typewriter called Corona and uh, to mention 201. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what we can say. Maybe he's just joking or maybe he's intentionally doing something strange. Um, are there... Is there any any final thought? I mean, you've mentioned the fear porn. So, you know, what do I tell people? What do we tell people? Who, uh, I, I'm not afraid so much of the virus, and I, I don't think it's something we can't uh, get over. You know, I was, in December, I was really sick and possibly had it, and I took 50,000 milligrams of vitamin C for a few days. But there's people, you know, freaking out and saying, yes, the government needs to respond the way that they are responding with effectively martial law. I mean, so what would you say to the people who are saying... Yes, we need this strong uh, response. I'd say please remember that you have something called an innate immune system. And the whole vaccine technology bypasses that. Um, arguably in Europe, they, they are wanting to do natural herd immunity. And I think that's also causing a riff. Um, I think that people, it's good to hunker down uh, for a while. Uh, but th- to not, it's a frequency. Now, I'm not saying I'm immune to it. Uh, I'm just saying there's other ways and you have an immune system. I don't know what to say to people who who are, I believe, you know, the Nuremberg Code. I believe in, in informed consent. I believe in medical freedom. And I don't want to be forced vaccinated. And for many of us, it's very, very scary because we've actually done the research. We're not just spewing scientism. We have looked at the science. And and um, so I, I hope that we can practice kindness. Like we're already seeing looting, um, civil unrest. And I, I think it's, it's unfortunately in us only the beginning. So I would just, Invite people to connect to their spirit and to practice kindness and self-awareness and uh, brave up and, and try to see the silver linings. I, I hope that's of value. Yeah, I mean, people are killing each other over toilet paper. I can't imagine when it gets to, to food. Um, so any final thought? And then if you want to tell us uh, where we can find you, I mean, you're all over the place still, Instagram, Twitter, your website. You, you have your own YouTube channel where you do uh, interesting interviews. Yes, I, I would like to invite people to please follow me on Twitter because I'm it's real time and I'm shadow banned depending on the week and it's gotten a lot better. But um, and my YouTube channel, uh, which is Mary Hinein Bee Lady, and to remember that uh, we are the bees and that we can work together for the greater good. I mean, I 
you know, before the power went out, my girlfriend sent me um, a, a post that, that says that they're turning parking lots in Los Angeles into um, to follow COVID protocols and vaccination centers. And I posted a picture from the film Contagion, Contagion where you see a vaccine center. So... I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's going to be a place to go where people who don't want to be vaccinated can can go in, in peace. Um, yeah, if you have anything to add to that, the best thing is to keep your body strong and your thoughts pure and positive. Oh, I, I agree with you. And I think you're doing, you made a good decision. You, you'll probably be safer than uh, a lot of us being down in, in Costa Rica. So... Thank, uh, thank, thank you again for the interview, and I urge people to... Thank you. I, I find your Twitter very valuable, and I check out um, uh, your YouTube interviews, so thanks for the work that you're doing. Thank you. Likewise, thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this Geopolitics and Empire podcast and interview. I would like to remind you that our website is geopoliticsandempire.com, and you can sign up for our mailing list that goes out each weekend with the latest podcast and a long collection of important news headlines. It's good to sign up for the newsletter in case we experience censorship and deplatforming. You can help the Geopolitics and Empire podcast by subscribing to and interacting with all of our channels such as YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Gab, Minds, and Steemit. You can also help us by leaving a rating and review on your favorite podcast platforms such as iTunes, CastBox, Stitcher, Spreaker, and so on. Finally, if you value our work and our mission and would like to see us continue interviewing experts from across the political spectrum, please consider leaving a one-time donation via PayPal or Bitcoin or becoming a regular monthly supporter on our Patreon. All the links can be found on geopoliticsandempire.com. Thanks for listening.